MSNBC doing some journalism. Very exciting stuff. You don't really see it that much, especially from Morning Joe, who's been much maligned because they first started playing patty cakes with Donald Trump and there was that released audio of them you know, buddying up to him and just trying to be best friends forever. You know what I thought was the um, kind of wow moment was the guy you brought up on stage? Yeah, that was good. Um, we played it several times this morning. We played it up against Obama. The both guys. The both, both guys. guys. Oh, yes, we played Obama first. The young guy and then the we champ. played the guys. I saw it. I watched your show this morning. Mm. Um, but now they've turned on Donald Trump. Uh, Joe Scarborough was once very much rumored to be his potential running mate if he made it past the primary, which we all, of course, know that he did. And now, you know, they've turned on him, like much of the mainstream media, which I know is sometimes music to the ears of his of Donald Trump's base, which is very anti-establishment, as much of us are right now, gives Donald Trump an upper hand and an advantage right now in the p current political system when he's running against the most establishment candidate that has ever existed in the history of this country. Scarborough and his team kind of confronted Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, who was giving no answers to these questions about foreign policy. So here we go. MSNBC Morning Joe host Joe Scarborough got confrontational Wednesday with Hillary Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook after he re repeatedly fair to an uh, failed to answer questions about the Democratic presidential candidate's foreign policy. So Willie Geis then asked Mook about Clinton's past support of Obama's red line policy in terms of Assad's use of chemical weapons. I mean, what, what about in Syria, though? She supported the drawing of the red line. Obviously, she was out uh, of her office when, when Assad used chemical weapons. Was it a mistake to draw the red line if the president was not willing to go uh, to do something about it when it was crossed? Well, as you pointed out, the, the, the decision regarding that was made after she was uh, out of office. So I, I think you'd have to ask uh, uh, was President she disappointed? Obama. Okay, but Hillary Clinton, when she was Secretary of State, which is one of the most powerful positions in the world, had a hand in determining the foreign policy when it dealt with Syria and Assad. So does she not have an opinion on it? As you, as a campaign spokesperson and as, and as a campaign manager... You should have her talking points down at the very least. He didn't have an answer. And then Geist follows up again. Is she disappointed that the president didn't that. act when the line was crossed? I, I think you'd have to ask her about that question, how she would characterize well, you're here her to feelings. Speak for her, about Robbie. So you, you haven't discussed that at all? <laughs> no, no, no. That's your job. You are the campaign manager and you're on a television show. Are you there to show you off your pearly whites and smile the whole time? I don't understand. You're meant to talk policy. Were you thrown off guard? I, I, I'm assuming, knowing how, you know, a little bit about how the mainstream media works, that they briefed you beforehand and said, we're going to be talking foreign policy today. At the very least, they probably, I'm sure they didn't funnel you the questions, but the, they, you knew the general topic, or you should know the general topic. This isn't like some obscure piece of policy from 2003 from like the Illinois State Senate. This is a very important cornerstone of her foreign policy experience, which, as I will discuss later, is her greatest strength in the eyes of the American people. So how could you not have an answer for this? She, <laughs> uh, look, I, what matters is what she is going to do as president. And as I said, she has a clear plan to defeat ISIS. Donald Trump does not. Not much of it is clear here, Robbie, because you're not giving a clear answer about Syria and about chemical weapons in the red line. So I don't understand how you can just say she has a clear fan plan to defeat ISIS without actually giving out that clear plan and other aspects of her foreign policy. You're saying that Trump has the issue with clarity and the issue with creating concrete plans. And I'm sure Hillary Clinton does internally have a concrete plan in terms of foreign policy. The issue is that maybe we, don't, we won't like it. And that's why he doesn't want to be clear. Scarborough, it is his show, eventually kind of takes over and says, uh, but what, what are you here? What are you, we, we love you, buddy, but what are you here for? If you can't answer <laughs> basic questions that, I mean, I, I, I don't know if there's a, I mean, we're, we may be uh, tiptoeing into Gary Johnson territory here. If you don't know the answer to that basic of a question, what is the response to Aleppo? Then what, why do we have you here? I think, I, 
Look, I, you're asking uh, new policy questions. Um, you would have to ask the secretary new. for that. My uh, job's not to been set around policy. For, Syria's been around for some time. The red line being drawn has been around for some time. Wait, 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 wait. You just said previously that you don't want to live in the past, and now you're saying these are new policy questions? What are you trying to say, Robbie? I, I'm simply saying that she has laid out uh, a plan uh, to defeat ISIS. Uh, and if there are new questions pertaining to Aleppo, I'm going to need to let her answer those. And she will answer those uh, in the debate. And we look forward uh, to her having the opportunity to do that. Like, I, I just, what was the point of this interview, Robbie? <laughs> like, why did you come on? He was goofily smiling the whole time. It didn't make much sense. And I'm really glad that Joe Scarborough and his team kind of just called him out. It was a pointless interview, and it showed a strange ineptitude on the part of the Clinton campaign. Their cornerstone and the what they have going for them, which is very slim right now because she is losing ground and all of the polling is trending in Donald Trump's favor, the, the thing that she has going for her is that she has competency in terms of foreign policy. So you would think that she would have briefed this guy to go on MSNBC on a, you know, a theoretically uh, big stage and have an actual answer for, for Morning Joe. But he had nothing. And that's incredibly concerning. Because if this is the cornerstone of your campaign, and if you are a very experienced person in politics, which we all acknowledge that you are, why are you so hesitant to uh, convey the substance of your policy. And that's because maybe we won't like it. So either this guy's inept or he was made to look inept by not really wanting to give anything of substance on a major platform like MSNBC.